of the uh, of the Red Cross, that is the ICRC, who had signed annual agreement with the Gambia Red Cross, and part of the agreement is to support and build the capacity of the police force in terms of force aid. The Gambia Red Cross Society top official revealed that this support was provided by the International Committee of Red Cross as part of agreement signed to build the capacities of the Gambia Police Force. Abdullah Sanyang, Commissioner Administration of the Gambia Police Force, recognized the support rendered by the Gambia Red Cross Society all these years and called for an increase in the number of service personnel trained annually by the Gambia Red Cross Society. For having force aid at a remote area by the police also will, will not only assist the police but the community at large because you have certain areas where uh, health care is, uh, is not available so the police can take care of that duty and then training uh, police officers like training 5,000 police officers who are, uh, have the first hand knowledge of force aid that means you, you are adding 5,000 volunteers to the National Red Cross Society. The Deputy Inspector General of Police upon receiving the gift applauded the humanitarian organization for the good gesture and as the donors the materials will be put into good use. Force aid bags and 10 stretchers given to the Gambia Police Force as a trial we definitely commend them for what they have done. And I, once again, I was saying earlier on, these eight boxes and stretchers is good to the Gambia Police Force. Since Gambia Police Force is mandated to, to secure life and property. This donation is among the many interventions the Gambia Red Cross Society is doing to help the vulnerable and improve standards of living. For GHS News, I am Fatou Jassi. Well, that report by Fatou Jassi will take us to our first break, and when we return, we'll take a look from news outside the Gambia. Stay tuned in. We have slush puppy, the flavors we have are blueberry, lemon and lime, strawberry. We have popcorn, with the sugar and the salt. We have natural frozen yogurt. We have different flavors of ice cream, including vanilla, strawberry and chocolate. The ice creams can also be topped with, with the ripples or the sprinkles as well. Icy Wonderland, your experts in soft ice and frozen yogurt. Welcome to Icy Wonderland. Welcome back to GRTS News. UNESCO has revealed plans to restore damages caused in Timbuktu by Islamists. The destructions are estimated at around 4 to 5 million euros. As we hear in the CFI report, President Francois Hollande of France has also promised to help in the restoration process. The announcement was made to the press by the Director General of UNESCO in person. UNESCO will soon make an assessment of all the damage caused in Timbuktu by the Islamists. UNESCO estimates that between 4 and 5 million euros will be needed to repair and rebuild the mausoleum alone. We have to make an evaluation of the damage. Uh, we are ready to send a mission of experts uh, the first moment when the security allows. Most of the sacred tombs are in fact situated in the homes of big families who kept them well concealed and preserved during the 10 months of extremist occupation here. The same 30 or so families hold the majority of the 300,000 manuscripts in Timbuktu. This is an incredible treasure that dates back to the 15th and 16th centuries. The local authorities in Timbuktu believe that two to 3,000 manuscripts were destroyed in the fire that the Islamists started before they fled the town. We have collected all the necessary um, information we have, the plans, the photos. Uh, we have to restore them. It's extremely important uh, message for the local people, for Mali and for the world. The UNESCO Director General accompanied French President François Hollande during his visit to Mali last week. Hollande pledged French aid to the effort to rehabilitate these manuscripts. 
all the instruments that were being used to digitalize the precious documents will have to be replaced. Mali has seen its first suicide attack Friday when a bomber wearing a paramilitary uniform set an explosive at an army checkpoint in Gao. And the trial of former Chadian President Hassan Habre began today in the Senegalese capital, Dakar. For more on these and other stories, we turn to this African News Roundup by CFI. Mali has seen its first suicide attack. Friday morning, a suicide bomber wearing a paramilitary police uniform set off an explosive spelt at an army checkpoint in Gao in the north, injuring a Malian soldier. According to witnesses, the suicide bomber was a Tuareg. An Al-Qaeda offshoot called Mujao claimed responsibility. A special African court set up to try the former president of Chad, Issen Abre, officially began work today in Dakar. No date has been set yet for the trial proper. It has been seven years since the African Union mandated Senegal under Abdoulaye Wad to try the former dictator who has lived in Senegal for over 20 years. It was only when Macky Sall took office in 2012 that the procedure got underway. Chadian victims have waited for this moment since 1990. After 22 years of tenacity and perseverance, his son Habre's victims will finally get their day in court. Issan Abre, who's lived in Dakar since 1990, is accused of war crimes, crimes against humanity and torture. 40,000 people were reported killed during Issan Abre's dictatorship. In Zambia, a high-speed collision between a bus and a truck killed 53 people. The Zambia Postal Service bus had been taking passengers from the Copper Belt mining province to Lusaka. According to initial investigations, all the vehicles involved were speeding. 1,200 people are killed on the roads every year in Zambia out of a population of 13 million. Seventy people have died in floods in Mozambique in the Limpopo River Valley. 180,000 people were forced to leave their homes to take refuge on higher ground. The north of Mozambique is also badly hit by flooding. Thanks to a decade-long effort to lessen the impact of natural disasters, most people have survived these floods, which are the worst in 10 years. Well, time now to take our second break. When we come back, we'll take a look at sports. Stay tuned in. Bank, we see a great future, one that's full of opportunity for those who want to be the best. With over 1,000 branches of a single bank across 33 African countries, it's a future where trade can flourish without boundaries. The future is breathtaking with enormous cross-border investments helping business and government build new infrastructure. While individuals achieve their ambitions right across Africa. The future is Pan-African and Ecobank is the Pan-African Bank. Time now to join Farmara Fofana for a look at the sports news. Farmara. Thank you very much, Fatou Ann. Russian President Vladimir Putin paid a visit to Sochi, a village preparing to host the 2014 Winter Olympics. The village is being completely renovated to an outstanding sum of 14 million euros, making it the most expensive Olympic game. This year's final report looks at how Putin earlier was underestimating the cost of what is now a very mammoth project. A resort on the Black Sea is on its way to becoming the most spectacular Olympic facility in history. As host to the 2014 Winter Olympics, Russia is pulling out all the stops. Tickets went on sale Thursday. President Vladimir Putin paid a visit to the village to announce the official countdown. Once again, let me invite you all to Russia for the 22nd Winter Olympics. All the best to you. The village of Sochi is being completely renovated. New roads, railways, refurbished hotels, and 13 official venues. 
The president toured the site.